So here we are at last, Torn at the Pine Trees. You're all very welcome to the launch of my book. You're all standing there anxiously waiting for me. Uh, it's just taken me a couple of minutes to get here. Uh, Torn at the Pine Trees has been on the boiler for the last couple of years, and thankfully it's all over tonight. It's 12 short stories about a time when I grew up here from 1965 to 1970. So from the age of seven to the age of 12 right smack bang in the middle of the childhood years. They say that the childhood memories are the ones that stay with you the longest and this is, pr this is evidence of this because I can remember blow by blow accounts of all things that happened down in various adventures I had and they're all down in the book for you to read and enjoy. And I hope you enjoy the illustrations. Some of them aren't exactly perfect but I hope you enjoy them anyway. What we're going to do now is we're going to walk down to Turnipin Lane we're going to go around the back road. We're going to visit one or two places that I mentioned in the book. 90% of the locations that I mentioned in the book have long since disappeared. But thankfully, the pine trees are still here, which was once outside Carly's house, which was on the site here of Woodford Business Park. Santry Woods is mentioned in one story, and that's still there, the islands. Turnip and Lane, of course, itself is still there. A little bit altered than when it was when I was here. Um, Dunn's Corner is there. The corner at Hill Farm is here and we're all going to see that now as I walk, make my way down. So I hope you have a good evening. This is Jerry Cooley and Turn of the Pines. This is Jerry Cooley and Turn of the Pine Trees. Just forgotten the name of the group.
Back in Farrell's garden, the very end of it, you've just seen the pump house at the end of the garden. Heaney's Gap I've just walked through, and there's Farrell's house at the back. So that brings uh, our little walk around this side of Turnipin to an end. What we're now going to do is we're going to go around to the other side, because as we know, the M1 and the M50 cut Turnipin in part and cut us off from Clunshock, so we couldn't go there anymore. And that was the motorway that really spent the end of Turnipin Lane as a small little country hamlet. Catch me cause I'm going